Stuff like that happens all the time in horror franchises. Troll 1 had trolls, Troll 2 had goblins, and both sucked and are great. What's up guys, welcome to Boss Level 8 where we make fun of movie critics. We watched the new Halloween movie. We're gonna take a look at Jason Guerracio's, oh man, it's so hard to say his name. It's not a foreign thing or like an offensive thing. I just have trouble doing the, the, the double R. Mm. I have trouble with the double R and I'm sorry. We're gonna take a look at Jason Guerracimo Gra- Damn it, I keep screwing it up. Whatever, we're gonna take a look at this guy's review and see what he thought of Halloween. Seemed like a, you know, just straightforward slasher flick to me, but uh, but he's probably gonna have some, some crap to say about it, so let's make fun of it. If it's your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell right next to it. Now, that being said, let's take a look at his review. Perhaps it's best to just let the legend stay dead. We wasn't dead. That's the whole point. They've been like 20 of these. He didn't die. He keeps coming back. That's the whole thing. It's like most horror movies. They just keep coming back. It's like herpes. Michael Myers is herpes. Except you didn't get to have sex. Although technically you did because everyone who has sex dies in these things. So he's herpes. The Universal slash Blumhouse try at making a Halloween movie turned out to be just the latest lame attempt to cash in on the franchise. I guess, but they like had everybody on board. Like all the people who made it great in the first place on board. That doesn't seem like a cash grab. That seems more like a bunch of people really wanted to do this right. That's very, very different than cash grab. But I mean, when you have all of the people who made the first thing being like, hey, let's make, a, let's make another thing. Usually it's not like, let's just make some money. I, I know that Zoolander 2 exists, but let's just ignore that. Though director David Gordon Green goes in with all the right intentions, including the blessing of the creator of the franchise, John Carpenter, who was an executive producer on the movie. See? See? It all turned out to be just a fancy facade for a horror movie that may have some good gore, but little else. You know, horror movies aren't just gore and jump scares. There are also boobs, and there were none in this, except for the flashback. But that doesn't count, because we already saw those, and Lord knows that that's why you shouldn't get married. Who wants to see the same tits all the time? That was really misogynistic, and I don't actually mean that. I would love to see the same tits all the time. That's why I shower at all. The version of Halloween wants us to forget about everything that happened after the 1978 original. No, it continued it. 40 years later. They keep fucking saying 40 years later. How's that ignoring the original? That's not doing that at all. They wouldn't have said the amount of time that spanned between the original and now if they... That's just dumb. Also, if you're referring to all the other movies that happen after Halloween, well, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it's doing. But it's fine. Stuff like that happens all the time in horror franchises. Troll 1 had trolls, Troll 2 had goblins, and both sucked and are great. But the problem is, almost everything here we've seen before in a Halloween movie. The person getting out of the car and walking around in the dark after seeing something suspicious, eventually getting slaughtered, dim-witted cops, horny teens, and Meyer's cat-like moves to sneak up on someone and kill them. Yup, we've also seen it in every other slasher movie and we're fine with it. Totally, completely fine with it. I don't understand. At the end of a rom-com, if someone runs to the airport at the last second and falls in love, we are fine with it. It's absolutely and like and completely okay. We don't care. If there's like a, a hero in a sci-fi movie and everybody else is shooting lasers at him and they keep missing for some reason, we're super fine with it and we still watch the damn movie. I don't understand what you need. We like this. <laughs> like, man, keep putting cheese on pizza. This is stupid. If that's what Green and co-screenwriters Danny McBride and Jeff Fradley were going after, then they succeeded. But unfortunately for us, there isn't that much joy in watching. I really don't understand what you wanted from a slasher movie. It doesn't make any sense. Also, like, their, their entire intention was to, like, make a Halloween movie that's a slasher movie that's respectful to the, the, to the franchise. And it's fun and has like killings and tropes and all the things that we actually want in it and they succeeded according to you like they did this and you're like ad ah, shit what it's good to be nostalgic and give the audience some of the things that the original movie had but to pretty much carbon copy the original's beats is just plain lazy now that's just nonsense it wasn't carbon copied there's actually a lot of differences in fact, we were talking about one of the differences when we walked out of the movie. Normally in a slasher movie, there's someone who's scared shitless, and then eventually they become brave. In this movie, Jamie Lee Curtis's character wants to fucking kill him. 
the whole time. She's like, I will kill him. Like there were definitely different character arcs. Also, way more people survive than normally in a slasher film. And they actually show relationships in this and character development. They didn't do shit like that in 78. That didn't happen at all. Babysitters, guy trying to kill people, that's it. So if you're saying Michael Myers was killing people and he also was in the other Halloween movie, then yes, you're very, very correct. The opening of the movie had an interesting hook with the two podcasters tracking down Myers and Strode and setting up the backstory, but it turns out they were only there to die 20 minutes into the movie. Also, if you thought that that was an interesting premise, that seems like the most obvious premise, and I'm so fucking glad they died. That's, that's what made that great, because it was like, oh, okay, here's a way we can make this whole story work, but because these people are interviewing and filming. But turns out they went, nope, they're fucking dead, he's back, and that's great. Then the story is basically exactly like every other Halloween movie. People are being killed by Myers or running from him. <laughs> Man, would really it would be a, really, yeah, be a really disappointing Halloween movie if Michael Myers wasn't killing people and no one was running from them. <laughs> what are they just gonna like, have coffee and chat? Michael Myers online at Walmart. Michael Myers, someone at Starbucks got his name wrong. Like, what do you want this movie to be? He should kill people and people should run from him. There are too many things in this movie that feel drab and unoriginal. And coming from a horror produced by Jason Blum, that's disappointing. The movie does have a strong ending, but it hardly salvages it. I'm just wondering if the, the strong ending was also the same. That's what I want to know. It's like, you're like, everything in this movie is the same, but the ending was strong. Was the, was the ending also the same, but strong? Done strongly? It's like, ah, that, that's, that's how they all end, but, uh, but they really did it with some strength. They really went for it. For a project that has been riding high with anticipation from Halloween fans, this is no way to reward them. Yeah, we didn't ask for this. You know what's actually funny? We didn't ask for this. We were literally handed a fucking gift. <laughs> Just like complaining about a gift. I mean, I feel like just making a Halloween film is the reward. Just seeing the trailer was a reward for Halloween fans. We were like, huh? It could have been fake and we would have been like, yeah, but it was a really good trailer. Let's watch it again. What did you guys think of the new Halloween movie? Did you think it's a carbon copy of the original? Did you think it sucked? It's great. Let us know down in the comments and let us know what you thought of Jason Guaracio's review. I'm only saying it like with the head shake because I suck at the double R thing and I apologize. If it's your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell right next to it. Also, there are some videos on the screen of ours that you can check out just by clicking or tapping them. And until we see you guys next time, geek out and game on.